The Druva Data Resiliency Cloud modernizes data protection across all your workloads by not only providing air-gapped backups, disaster recovery, and long-term retention, but also providing a cloud-based, scalable, and secure backup ecosystem. With over 300 petabytes of backups under management, Druva sees more backup attack telemetry than any other data protection vendor on the market. We help customers protect and recover their environments in the event of a ransomware attack and create features and advanced functionality that goes above and beyond just backup and restore. Let's take a short tour of the Druva solution and walk through how you can secure backups from compromise, rapidly respond to incidents with data observability, and then finally curate and safely restore at scale with our advanced recovery capabilities. It all starts with autonomous protection within the Druva architecture. Legacy solutions require IT practitioners to constantly maintain, patch, and update their infrastructure. When systems go unpatched, attackers gain access through vulnerable backup software and can destroy backup data or even lock admins out of the backup environment. Druva's SaaS solution requires no hardware or software to maintain and delivers 24 by 7, 365 fully managed security operations, including penetration testing, vulnerability scans, automatic patches, and upgrades so you know you're always on the most recent and secure version. Not only is your backup ecosystem protected, but your backup data is as well. With a zero trust-based architecture, encryption at flight and at rest, immutability and delayed deletion protocols, you will always have a backup you can use for recovery. Your backups are the last line of defense in the event of a ransomware attack, and sophisticated new variants of ransomware specifically target backup data for encryption and deletion. With advanced observability tools, you can verify that your backup environment is configured for security best practices, verify your backups are working correctly, and monitor the environment for anomalous data activity within your backups. Make backup an integrated part of your security posture with SOAR, SIM, and API integrations. And finally, your backups are useless if you can't recover in a clean and timely manner. Current backup solutions lack well-orchestrated built-in recovery mechanisms, leading to a manual recovery process, reinfection due to restoring contaminated data, and incomplete data recovery. Druva offers the orchestration tools and recovery services you need to avoid reinfection and recover clean, comprehensive data sets automatically. And all of this is backed by our $10 million Druva Data Resiliency Guarantee, protecting against five key risks, including cybercrime, human, application, operational, and environmental risks. So let's take a look. The Druva Cloud Console is a unified management solution that provides insight into all of your data protection workloads and backup security posture. It all starts at the Security Command Center. The Druva ecosystem is operationally and logically separated from your production environment, and the Security Command Center gives insights into any security posture risks that your organization may be experiencing. With just a few clicks, you can quickly remedy any potential issues in your backups. Customers can configure multi-factor authentication or single sign-on for console security, and full role-based access control ensures that least privileged policies are in place, making sure that users can only see what they need to within the backup environment. Geofencing can help lock down who has access to the console from various regions of concern, and a full audit log is available to make sure you always know what is happening in the environment. You can even integrate your audit logs with SIM tools such as Splunk. And you can't recover from ransomware if your backups aren't configured and working properly. So here we can see if any of our workloads are having issues backing up or communicating with the Druva Cloud. It's also sometimes too easy to forget about API keys and admin passwords that might be floating around. So we also let you know when an account hasn't been accessed in a while or if there are still API credentials not being used that could possibly be hijacked. At Druva, we think about the various timelines of an attack, and we realize it's usually not an instant thing. During an incursion, whether it's the ransomware software package itself, or it's the threat actor, the first thing that they'll do besides poking around and finding more information is they'll try to compromise the backup system. They've learned that a company without a backup usually has to pay the ransom. So they've changed tactics to sabotaging any recovery efforts first before initiating any attacks. Besides configuring security for best practices for your ecosystem, we have an entire security events pane which will show you access events for APIs and administrative logins here. You can see where admins are logging in from, who's logging in, and what IP addresses they're using. Here's where geofencing can help at least eliminate some rogue logins, but IP spoofing or VPNs can occur, so it's just one piece of the solution. Since the Druva solution is API driven, you can easily add many of the UI calls into APIs, but this could also allow for a rogue call to cause havoc in the same system if they aren't locked down. 
You can see more by drilling into any of these API calls, and you can get more information about who's doing it and where it's coming from. Druva backups are stored in the cloud with encryption in flight and at rest, and located in an immutable, air-gapped, non-executable space. But if a threat actor gets administrator privileges and begins to wreak havoc, Druva has a feature called rollback actions. Rollback actions provide a secure, read-only area with a retention window that stores anything that was deleted. This rollback area cannot be deleted by anyone, even administrators, so it gives you another safety net in the case of accidental or malicious deletions. So whether it's somebody deleting users, deleting profiles, deleting workloads, or deleting backups, those objects are stored for X number of days. For example, in here, you see it's seven days, and this is all configurable. So now, whether it was malicious or accidental, administrators can come into rollback requests, find what was deleted, and roll it back into their primary backup environment to then continue the recovery process. For that additional layer of immutable backups, customers can enable something called data lock. Once something has been configured for data lock, it cannot be deleted or moved or changed until the retention policy is over. This prevents someone from either deleting backups or even modifying the retention policy. Any of your backup sets can be configured to change to a data lock policy, but at that point, all of the backups from the past and anything moving forward will now have that data lock retention setting. So between the secure cloud operating model of Druva, customer security settings, event logging, rollback actions, data lock, your backups are protected in the cloud. Now, beyond the threat actor messing around in your backup ecosystem, ransomware itself is going to start impacting the files within the organization. We've seen that dwell time for ransomware can be in the multiple week time frame, slowly encrypting files, slowly modifying environments, and sometimes it can't be caught until it finally locks everything down across multiple workloads. Every backup has a summary of files that have been changed, but beyond that, we have unusual data activity alerts, which monitor the backups for things like deleted files, encrypted files, and anything anomalous to your normal backup routine. You may not usually encrypt 20,000 files on a Friday afternoon, so when we see something like that, we want to make sure you're aware of it. We can drill into any backup set or look at the overall environment to note trends. It could be a precursor to an event and can also be used during forensics when looking over timelines of when things happened. Leveraging machine learning and what we see holistically across all of our anonymized backup sets from all of our customers lets us notice when something just isn't quite right. And we can alert you to unusual activities even inside your virtual machines and SaaS apps. Drilling into any of the logs lets you see which files are causing the alerts, and you can quarantine your resources from here if you notice an alarming amount of abnormal behavior. And once you have a good handle on your backup sets, you can even modify the unusual data activity settings to truly customize what kinds of anomalous behavior you're looking for. So, what happens when an attack happens? How do you use all of the information and tools you have to recover quickly and cleanly and get back to business? One of the things you can do is quarantine the backup. Maybe from EDR logs, you know which systems are under attack. You can add those systems to the quarantine bay. This prevents any recovery from that resource until you have time to investigate and find out what's inside that backup. So you're not reinfecting your environment with something that could potentially re-encrypt everything all over again. This could also be part of your ransomware playbooks by integrating into your security tools like SOAR, and we can go back and use the unusual data activity alerts to find the individual backup sets that were impacted and then get detailed data activity trends. So now we can actually start looking to see how far back the encryption started happening, which files were infected, which systems were impacted, and how broad the scope of attack is. This gives us a time frame that may or may not align with when users actually noticed a lockup or when security operations started to see the issue. You can quarantine from here, or you can use the quarantine bay, and that just prevents any sort of recovery with malicious content from getting back into your environment until you have time to investigate. Another thing you can use is federated search to search across multiple backup sets for that malicious file or other indicators of compromise. Once you have the hash value of whatever malicious code is detected, you can plug it into here and see all of the backups that contain it. From here, you can defensively delete the files to prevent an accidental recovery at a later time. The last thing you want to do is restore something months after the incident that has the ransomware lurking in it. This also lets you isolate machines that may also be ready to strike next. 
When it comes to recovery, the last thing you want to do is have to go through multiple backups looking for all of the correct versions of files for all the impacted systems. This can lead to prolonged recovery, missing files, or accidentally recovering malicious content back into place. So here you can use what's called the curated snapshot. Let's say you're backing up every day and slowly ransomware is encrypting files. A few here, a few there. Maybe they're looking at files that haven't been touched in a while because they know the chance of getting noticed is lower. Either way, you now have incomplete backups across multiple days and multiple snapshots. Traditionally, you would either have to roll everything back to before the attack to get up and running, and then slowly recover files that are safe afterwards, or restore the latest version and find and replace any lingering issues by searching each prior backup. Either of these solutions is incredibly tedious, time-consuming, and error-prone. So instead, we use a curated snapshot. A curated snapshot is a collated grouping of snapshots based on a time frame that consolidates all of the known good versions of the files from across multiple backups into a single restore object, allowing you to quickly recover to a clean known good state. The first thing you want to do is create a date range of how far back to collate the backups before scanning them, because you may have had files that were encrypted on Monday and then some on Tuesday and then some on Wednesday, and by Friday the entire system was shut down. You don't want to have to restore every single one of those incremental backups because you could potentially lose data or just miss some files somewhere. So by using some of the information we found in our investigation, using the unusual data activity along with our InfoSec team, we can actually determine how far back we want to collate. We would choose that here because this is creating a new backup set that we can restore from. And that backup set also has its own retention policy. Depending on the situation, we can retain this recovery point for a number of days, allowing us an easy way to recover known good files across a long dwell time window. Now, before recovering, the last thing we want to do is accidentally reinfect the environment. We need to have this data validated and scanned to make sure that it is clean when restoring. All Druva restores have the ability to do a malicious file scan before restoring. This puts the backup through current AV and indicators of compromise scans before it ever comes back. And if you had additional file hashes, like for example, something from your InfoSec team specifically about the ransomware that targeted your system, you can add it and filter that out as well. Once a curated snapshot is created, you can download the report and you can view it to see which files were skipped. You can see if it was malicious or was part of the IOC or just an extension that you wanted to skip. And then once you click on the curated snapshot, you can see that you can browse it just like normal and restore any and all of the files in place or to a new location. And remember, these are the collated curated versions from across that multiple time frame, multiple backups, all in a single unified restore system, saving you the time and hassle of finding the correct clean files from each backup. Select which files you want to recover and click on restore. Restore in place, overwrite, restore somewhere else, whatever you need to do to quickly get back up and running, knowing that it's already been scanned. Now, what about virtual machines? VMs are a little different because they encompass the operating system and the data. You want to bring them online, but in an isolated environment to verify that they're working as intended and without infection. Here, we can restore full virtual machines into an isolated sandbox environment so that once the VM is scanned and given a clean bill of health, it can be put right back into service. By orchestrating the recovery into the sandbox, removing the network connections, and fully scanning the VM, we can accelerate the clean recovery of virtual machines. So that was just a brief demonstration of the Druva security capabilities within the console itself, and when it comes to autonomous protection of your backup environment, full observability and monitoring, and accelerated recovery, the Druva Data Resiliency Cloud goes above and beyond just backup and restore.